Well today we're going to do a lesson on how to paint on location boats in Greece. This was a wonderful experience I had. I'm going to be using the Mars Stadler graphic permanent pen and this is a beautiful pen that has a sepia tone to it. It's not black. It's actually a beautiful dark brown. You can see an example right here. And what I love about this is it's archival. And this is very important. If you're going to be doing any pen and ink drawing and hope to sell it afterwards, you have to be sure that you're working with archival ink. This ink comes from Germany. It's excellent. There's also some very excellent pens that come from Japan. Oh, uh, one is called Pigma. Okay, now here's an example of an on-location painting <clears throat> that I did when I was in Italy. And it's really pretty exciting. I, I like to work with the 11 by 15 format. So by folding my paper in half the long way, you can see that I can also do these panoramic drawings if I like that format. And this one was, our bus was a little late, so I started drawing. First of all, I started with this side. And as he was later and later, I just opened it up and started going for the rest of it. So I have to say this was probably the most fun I've ever had waiting for a bus. Some of the other examples here, this is a boat picture I just found when I was digging out some resources here. I probably painted this or drew this about 30 years ago. And that's that same pen and you can see there's been no deterioration in the ink. And uh, one of these days I'm going to have to paint this. <laughs> And here you can see an on-location piece I did in France. And one of the things I'm going to be teaching is how you do the cast shadows first. Then you layer the colors over the top. So in this particular location, the stonework was almost all very golden in color. So my layers of shadows underneath were done in a magenta with just a little bit of cobalt blue added. And then I pretty much came over this with quinacridone gold and some raw siennas. And here's another one I just got back from Italy. And this was on the grounds at the, the Tuscan Renaissance Center. This was actually our studio in here. It was the old church. And you can see the beautiful cast shadows. And when they're cast onto a building that's, again, yellow in tone, you simply put more magenta in it. But if you happen to be having cast shadows, like on this pot here, then you're going to use cobalt blue. Okay, so basically this was mostly done with the permanent magenta, a little bit of cobalt. This was done mostly with cobalt. And then when you layer the orange over the blue, you get the gray. When you order the gold, layer the gold over the magenta, you get this lovely gray tone. And sometimes I'll even do this with a totally wet into wet production here. This one I did on location in Venice. And so I started out by wetting the paper and just letting the color run wherever it wanted to. Then I came back and did all the cast shadows again using the magenta and cobalt. And just to give you a very quick example of how cool this is, this is one I recently started in Croatia. And see, I'm ready now to come in and layer this beautiful golden color. This is Quinn Gold. And see, I use Arches paper. And when you use Arches paper and you and it dries, the underpainting dries, what happens is your colors are stable. They don't reactivate. So now when I come in with this golden color over this beautiful cast shadow, you can see that I'm going to get just some glowing color. Whereas here I'm layering quinacridone burnt orange over cobalt blue. And again, it gives you a beautiful gray, but it, you, it, the colors just glow. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that's what we're going to do today when we paint our bolts. We're going to, first of all, layer in some cobalts and magentas, and then we're going to come in and layer the color over the top. Now this is the, 
This is the actual painting that I did while I was in Greece. And <clears throat> even had a little excitement while we were there. I was painting away on this very painting and my palette fell into the water. And I was very lucky to have a tall friend there named Connie who was able to just lean over the dock and catch my palette as it was making its way to the bottom of the ocean here. And she was able to catch it. And I did notice that for a little while I got some interesting little salty effects on my paintings after that. It was quite an exciting moment. Okay, now you can see the beautiful light we had in Greece. This was on the island of Crete. And <clears throat> these are white boats. So in order to do this color here, I took a combination of cobalt blue. And because there's going to, there is not going to be any color layered on it later, what I did is I took a little bit of Windsor orange with my cobalt, and I made this beautiful gray. Here you can see it right here. This is Windsor orange, cobalt blue, and it, it makes a beautiful gray. In this gray color, it I think I want it a little bluer. This will be the color that I'm going to use to create the shadows on the boats. So again, I'll just keep adding water to this until I get the proper depth of color that I want. Now here's some some other boats that I started. This was at Nesbar, Bulgaria. This is actually the Black Sea. And I did this while I was sitting there. And I still haven't finished some of the ocean in the back. But oh, what a gorgeous sight that was. Again, beautiful weather. So we were getting some lovely cast shadows. This was a really interesting one that I did while I was in Venice. And so what I did is I did this quick sketch and I just took some phthalo green and alizarin crimson and mixed up this beautiful dark color. And I simply painted all the blacks and the reflections that I could see. Then I thought, well, it's really cool. All we, all we have here for color really was that gorgeous blue boat reflecting in the water. And this was my plan. I was just gonna stop here with the gray tones and the blue boat. But of course, this is what happens. All of a sudden I looked around and I saw these gorgeous golden colors and some of these beautiful orangey gold colors and I couldn't stop. I had to keep going. And so eventually I ended up painting the entire thing. <laughs> that was just a very exciting morning. So now you can see I'm ready to go with this gorgeous setting in Greece. And here's a picture. And one of the things that I'm going to go for are these beautiful shadows here that we're going to use that gray tone to produce. The, the other thing we're going to do is instead of drawing in all this background, I'm just simply going to treat it almost like an abstract collection of shapes, a little bit of color. I just didn't feel like doing an entire restaurant with all these chairs and tables, all these gables, all these windows. What I was really excited about were the boats and the reflections. So if you want to, that's basically what you can do. You just select what you're really excited about, edit out the rest. So when I'm done with the boats in the water, I'm just simply going to do a somewhat abstract treatment of the background. Just to give you an idea what I'm talking about, I'll show you the picture I actually did when I was on location in Greece. Here you can see how I just made up some shapes in the background and that that basically tells the story of what's happening on the back of the dock without all the photographic detail. So we're ready to go. This is my reference up here. And let's go. Now I'm going to do the reflections on dry paper. And that's really important. We want to have these shapes with crisp edges. So anytime I see some cast shadows, for example, there's a cast shadow here 
oh, under the that overhead. And there's some very nice cast shadows over here. Now, one of the things that I tell my students is what you don't want to do is draw with the pen all those pen lines, all those shadow shapes. Just wing the shadow shapes. Just paint them. Don't try to draw them in. It, it just doesn't work. They should be rather spontaneously put on. Now, there are some interesting little patterns on the side of the boat. I think I will catch a few of those. You notice how fluid my paint is. This way I can just keep grabbing some and moving it around. You don't want to paint too dry. I think this is a problem that a lot of students have, is they paint too dry. This is about a number 10 brush, and it, it's doing a great job of letting me just work my way along here, picking up a few of those ripply patterns that I like. Now the shadow in the water is just a little bit deeper. So I'm going to come in here with a little more blue. And I'm going to have to add just a little, it's a little bit too blue, I'm going to add just a little bit more of the Windsor orange. Not every orange will work, but the, the Windsor orange is pretty darn nice. So I want this to be a little bit darker. Keep adding a little more, checking it out. This looks pretty good. Maybe just a hair darker here. So there's a little bit of shadow between here. And now I'm going to start picking up some of these broken lines that you see in the water. One of the things that people do when they draw with a pen is they don't draw any of these reflections in the water. And I think it's really important. So you can see, look at how much drawing I did in the water. Very important. Now I'm going to start another puddle here using the same combination that's going to be even darker. In some of these shapes that I see, <clears throat> need to be just even a little bit darker. So I just added a little more blue to the mixture. And I might just let a little bit of this float in. And we're just going to catch some of these broken shapes. You can see how nice it is with the um, all those lines already drawn in. Love it. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my lighter mixture. Just add a little water to this. And this whole side of the boat is this soft gray. And this is so fun to do when you're sitting there. The difficult thing is these doggone boats keep moving. About the time you've got a a lovely part of your drawing done, you look out and the boat has moved. Oh, it drives me nuts. But it's also part of the fun. Just very challenging, let's face it. Boats are challenging. But don't get discouraged, it's really, they're really fun too. Okay, now I'm going to go again a little darker. As I see it here, the, the shadow in the water is a little bit darker. So I'm just going to come in with my darker value. And it's all negative painting at this, when I do this, when I have subjects like these little floating boys in the water. So I have to avoid them, I have to paint around them. And then reflections are a mirror image. So if this is going in this direction, this one will be going in the opposite direction, exactly underneath. This is a reflection and not a cast shadow. 
Okay, and I'm over here, I'm looking at what's even darker. So again, I'm going to take a little more Windsor orange, a little more blue, and I'm going to make this shadow even darker. Some of these broken shapes coming up. This is really fun. You just kind of make it up. As long as the lines, you leave some little white shapes and keep the lines moving. Just added a little more blue there. Again, just a little color change. Some little broken shapes. And then I want to come out here and show the wiggly water. Now, I'm going to finally come in with a little color. I'm going to use a little quinacridone coral for my red. And you can see there's these posts up here. And they're kind of coming down under this barrel. So I'm going to have to remember to paint some of those posts later. Then over here we've got a little red and a little floating in the water. We've got a red something up here in the boat that is now going to be reflecting down here in the water. And there's some red on top of the boat. We have a couple, I'm sure there's some type of life preserver. And they're actually kind of orange, too, so I just added a little orange to this. And... And here's where the fun comes in. These things would now be reflecting in the water directly below. So sometimes if you're having a little trouble find, figuring out what's directly below, I'll even give myself a little aid here. Point the tip of your brush. Here too, we've got to come down. Well, that was fun. So now there's still some objects that need to be cast in shadows. So up here, and this piece here. The side of this barrel is going to be in shadow. About the bottom half of each of these guys. That could be just a little bit darker. And then I can come in and go just a little bit darker on some of these shadows. So that's all you do. It's just correct, correct, have fun. Now you have to imagine that on location this is constantly changing. So I'm going to just come in with, I just added a little more blue to this. And I'm going to come in and do just a few more of these wonderful dark, darker shadows. A little more blue. <clears throat> We're almost.
almost ready to let this dry. And I'm thinking what might be a good idea is to get started on some of these abstract shapes up here. One of the things that I want to do is I want it to be much darker so that these appear lighter against uh, these white boats against a darker background. So I'm going to just take this very similar grayed down color in a darker version and I'm going to come in and paint in this, I'll put a little more water in this, this lovely darker shape. And again, it's just negative painting. Straighten that out a little bit. Leave some little whites. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be painting more shapes around this later. So what we want to do is just get a beautiful backdrop for this boat. That's also part of the boat there. Okay. I think what I'll do is just run this right off the edge of the paper here. And let's see, this will be Make sure that the colors, like on this side, come out here and here. It's what we call bookending. We want this to look like a backdrop, not separate shapes. So there we have, I think what's going to look, out, look pretty good. I'm going to add just a little more water to this and do another shape over here. this shape just a little bit bluer almost like sky okay, we're gonna have a little fun putting in this wall behind here and you never use the uh, full spectrum yellows like Windsor yellow or areolan yellow what I'm going to be using is raw sienna this is a beautiful color it's transparent and then I'm also going to use a little quinacridone burnt orange and maybe just a little of that combined together here now it's a little bit lighter on top of the dock and a little bit darker down below so I'm going to put just a little bit more of the quin orange down here And this is going to form the edge of the dock. And we'll just pull that color around. Painting around all these objects. It's really important that you just leave them the white of the paper so they can become another color later. And now the same color, we're going to want to reflect this in the water. So we'll mix up a little batch here, come and bring it down into the water. And then later, this will change a little bit when I come in with some soft blues in the water. I'll paint right over this. So what I'm teaching is a layered way of working. All these colors are layered, layered, layered. This is simply the first layer. So I'm going to let this dry now. Then we're going to come back and wet the water and get some of those nice, wet looking shapes that you see down here. 
and, and we'll do some more cast shadows up here when that dries. And we'll start adding some objects in the boat and finish our abstract background. So now my painting is dry. And it, the next thing I want to do is I want to create some of this lovely movement in the water. And that you just look at your subject and go, what, how, did, how was that accomplished? Was that done wet into wet or was that done on dry paper? And what I think is going to be the best interpretation is to simply do it on wet paper. And remember I told you, when you paint on arches, which is, I just think this is one of the coolest things, you can, you can simply re-wet it. It does not reactivate the colors. And you can do this over and over. It's a form of... Wet, wet into wet that I absolutely adore. Now I am going to paint around that little yellow buoy and <clears throat> while I was off camera I did do just very little painting. I painted that yellow buoy and I, really I think that's about all I did. <laughs> okay, isn't that a miracle? This is why I love this paper. It actually gives me the freedom to re-wet it without um, activating all that paint. Now, some of this did activate just a little. I guess I'll have to admit that. Just a very little. But that, that was because it was just painted such, just minutes ago. If this had had time to sit in the sun, it would not have activated at all. So now what I want to do is just come in with some pure cobalt blue and get some of that gorgeous sky. This is pure cobalt blue. And I'm just simply going to bump into the edge of this buoy. I'm going to leave some whites. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of glaze and swirl this color around in the water all the way up to the edge of the dock. And you can see now that makes this reflection look like it's underwater. And we'll pick up a few more shapes here. Moving through, swirling back, pick it up. And we'll just leave a few of those whites. And then I want it just to be a little bit darker in a few places. Just cobalt. Isn't that cool? So now it looks like water. I'm going to go just a little bit darker in a few places. So I'm just picking up again pure cobalt. Sometimes I like to put a second color. You see this a lot in the sky. I think I'm actually going to activate a little manganese blue here too. It's a lovely blue that has yellow in it. So that'll be nice. Let's do just a little bit of that color. Swirl it around. Just let her be. Now, if you, let's say you forgot a couple of shadows, which I, I didn't necessarily forget them, but this is how I like to do it. See, as I'm looking at the shadows here, there's like this first layer of shadow, and then there's another layer of shadow over that. So again, I'm going to do my mixture of Windsor Orange and Cobalt Blue, and this shadow is a little bit darker than the one I did before. I actually switched my brush to about a size 6 now. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and do a second layer of shadows. And you can do as many of these as you want. That's what's so fun. So if you miss something the first time, don't worry about it. You just come in and do it again. And then there's another lovely shape just kind of shooting across here.
We'll make this whole thing a little darker. <clears throat> it's darker here in the front end. And there's a little bit of a cast shadow that just runs under that railing. There. Now again, if you've forgotten anything, I can see that I need just a real light little shadow on this. But it's all about values. I still want this to be lighter than this, and I want this to be darker than that. So that's what you do. You just keep doing it over and over. Now there's a cast shadow in the water here from that lovely shape. And what we'll do is we'll cast that after my water dries. And I want this just a little bit darker. So I just came in and made it a little bit darker. There. And now it's time to look over here and see if I missed anything. Oh, this needs to be just a little bit darker here. And it wouldn't hurt to make this here. Is there anything I missed over here? I could actually make myself a really dark, dark, more orange, more cobalt, <clears throat> and put in a few more darks here. Don't even have to know what these things are. That's the part I like. You just do it. <clears throat> and now it's time to think about doing some more dark shapes in this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a dark shape. To really pop the boat out. And I think what I'll do is add a little French ultramarine blue to this mixture. This will also gray it down a bit. <clears throat> and it'll give us a little darker value. That's very important. I'm doing this with my smaller brush. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little quinacridone burnt orange and a little French ultramarine and go even darker. And I like that look of that warm color kind of floating around in there. So we'll just go ahead and make a couple of shapes here. Something to take us off the edge of the paper. We'll leave a few shapes in it. I'm going to come in and do a larger shape back here. I'll just go right over the shape I created, make it darker, and then design a shape into this. Something real simple, just something to say there's stuff going on in the background. So we'll keep it real simple. Now let's do another shape, and then let's come down here, I think I'm going to switch to my larger brush, my number 10. As soon as you start doing some good size shapes, it's silly to be working with such a small brush. And the round brush is perfect because it gives you that opportunity to get in and around all these lovely little shapes that are important. And I'm just going to let this end somewhere in there. Good. And now we'll come up here with another little shape coming around. Looks like a pipe or something. One thing is just to just let it, just design it as you go. 
But I definitely wanted to pop out this boat. The darker, the better. <clears throat> Greece is one of my favorite spots to travel to. I've got a trip coming up shortly and I'm already looking forward to it. There's always these great boats. Subjects abound everywhere. But there's something very exciting about working with reflections and water. Oh, so exciting. And we're just going to let that. I think what I'll do is come in with, this is what I call pushing it back. It's a way to soften the shadows. So you just come in with a little water and push it back and just let it end. That's good. Now let's build up another shadow shape over here. Oh, I did forget to mention that I painted these little red shapes in here too. So let's come over here and paint just a few little shapes. And these, this will kind of indicate that there's something sitting on the dock almost shaped like a building, like the roof of a building. There we go. So that's the fun part. You just look into your picture and look for shapes that are really there. And there it is, this converging lines coming down. And you just pick out the shapes you like. That's the fun part about editing. You don't want to put, oh, the last thing I want to do is put all those shapes in there. There. Now let's put another one here. <laughs> just something, as I look up at the picture, I keep seeing these simple shapes. That will help break that up. And maybe one more coming down here. And that's going to be enough for now. That's going to help give us some shapes. Okay, the next thing is to simply lay in the colors that you see. I'm going to go back to my little brush because I'm going to be using, I'm going to mostly be doing some of these small shapes. So as I look in here, I can see some lovely kind of orangey colored shapes. So I'm going to change this into a little bit more orange. Layer a little. Anything I can do to warm this up at this point is really going to make a big difference. And I see some more red over here. I'm going to intensify this red a little bit. I think I'll make this barrel red. It's not really red, but it's going to be now. And there's something hanging on the wall here. Let's take and make that red too. And I do think we need to intensify a few of these colors since they've been layered several times. Now they're lightening up a bit. And we do need to take our blue shadow here. Oops. Got to wash my brush out a little better than that. And just go right over this. There. Now we're getting a nice cast, cast shadow on that. Little shadow here. Little shadow in the water. So now you just start looking for details like that. And then I just want to get a little more color. I'm going to add some greens up here. Maybe a little green on the wall reflecting in the water. Um, I think I'll green up this little barrel here. Getting desperate for color. I'm going to pick up this color here and run it along the boat. Oh, 
Ooh, this feels good. Feel even better if I wasn't. I got. I have to support my arm in the water here. Thank goodness it's dry enough for that. And then that, of course, is going to give us an opportunity to reflect a little bit of that in the water too. And things that reflect, reflect exactly below. So see that can go out to there, and that can go out to there. That's great. And this, whatever this little cute thing is on up here, I'm going to make it red. And that's going to give us just a little bit more red in the water. So what's next? Hmm. Oh, I see something that needs to get a little bit of dark. So again, I'm going to take my quinacridone burnt orange and some French ultramarine blue. Going to mix a nice dark here. And there's a figure up here. And I'm going to come in and paint some of these stripes in the background here, this nice warm dark. And I might even warm this up a bit. Possibly this little gaffing stick or whatever it's called. <laughs> we never know what those things are. And again, that would reflect right, right below it. So, we'll get a little help here. And now what we need are just a few more, something warm up in the upper part. I'm going to add another red up here. And, and when this dries, I'm going to layer some nice gray color over that. I don't want the white of the paper up there. But again, it's a lot easier to wait for it to dry and just simply do a wash over the top. So this, this pretty much covers how to paint boats. I am going to do just a little bit of cobalt blue shadowing on this, this side here. The sun is touching up here, so obviously we have to put a little shadow here. Because this is kind of an orangey color, the best color choice is cobalt. See, all these grays are simply complements the orange and blue the yellow and magenta you just work with complements there that's better that pushes that back a little bit and i think we're in pretty good shape now i did add <clears throat> those greens up here so now i've got to come in and put just a little bit of green in my water down here that was fun I'm always looking for excuses to, to put color into the picture. I think what I'm going to do is some final darks here, and then I'll finish that background after it's dry, and we'll wrap it up. So now one of the things I see that I haven't really captured yet are these beautiful, strong, dark shadows. So I need to go just a little bit darker for example, under the boat here. This is just my number six brush again. And then I want to pick up some of these lovely dark shapes in the water. And the water's always moving, so that's kind of easy. You just swoop it back and forth and get that feeling of the water movement. Keep this real fluid so it's easy to flow onto your paper. And reflections in water are always pretty straight, with the exception of an occasional, like the water here 
is being pulled out by tides. So sometimes you get some diagonal movement. But for the most part, everything is pretty straight. It's fun. And this would be like the last thing you would do now is to come in and get these extra strong dark shapes. It's usually done on pretty dry paper. And you're always thinking about that water movement. That's really fun. Passing through things, coming back. A couple more down here, looping through, coming back. And a few more darks up in here. And then you can do some reversals. Now, for example, against the light boat, I can make this just a little darker. And then if I ever get a chance to save it as a white, I'll do that. White against dark and then dark against light. And then we do have a little color. Gosh, I don't want to miss any opportunity to add a little color. Put a little blue on his boat here. And where would that reflect? Hmm, probably way down here. Nobody will know if you get it wrong. <laughs> so that pretty much wraps up what I want to show you. I'll take a little time off camera to do just a little more um, playing with some of these abstract shapes up there. And maybe touch up a few things I might have forgotten. Well, since I've been off camera, I came in and I added some more darks back here with a couple more additional shapes that I just left in negatively. So this was the color before I added this dark color. And then I softened the edge here. I did add a few more darks in the water. And there's really only one little thing left to do and that is to glaze over this area. And again, I'm going to use my cobalt blue with just a little bit of the orange added to gray it down a bit. And I'm just going to come in here and push this back a little bit more. Because after all, it's just a backdrop for this. And because it's dry, I can go ahead and do this and not much color will move. And it depends on the colors you use. Now, I, I, my palette is mostly non-staining colors. So sometimes non-staining colors will move just a little bit. But I do like that better. Now it's pushed back. There's one little, this little window here could be just grayed down a bit to, um, give it so it looks like he's inside the boat. I did add a few little darks up in here and we are complete. Hope you enjoy this lesson.